Welcome back to the next day of building our firebug. Today we're cutting out our bulkheads. Um, as you can see down here on the former, we've already cut out three uh, of the bulkheads. One is the temporary one there in the middle. Um, I'll just take you over here. This is uh, the bulkhead number one, which is just one of the formers. And I'll just take you through the procedure I'm just using to cut these out. The first thing I'm doing is I lay down a, a center line down the middle of the board which I will take all my measurements off. I've actually cut this board to the exact height that I needed, which in this case is 300 moles. Um, and then I've measured uh, my points away from that. Um, what I do is I actually take the line, and here's our top corner on this one. Hopefully you can just see this down here, but uh, I've actually marked the, the line down here. I actually use a sharp craft knife actually cut through and I'll show you the reason why once I cut it. Here's the line we're going to cut down and I'll just uh, start with this. this is the little knife I use, uh, sorry, saw I use. It cuts quite nicely. As I cut down this line you can just see the chips pulling away. You can see what a nice uh, clean edge it marks. I'm cutting right up to the line. I've finished this cut and you can actually just see it here, a nice example of it. It looks quite clean on the, the top here, it's just because the veneer is actually just chipped away onto the where I've cut it with the craft knife. All we need to do now is actually just clean that up with a the sharp plane and uh, that'll come up nicely. You can see here bulkhead uh, 2 and 4, um, at this stage they're both identical. So now I've got the doublers on here and you can quite clearly see the shape of the cockpit sides and the support of the side decks. I'll just turn it over and we can see the doublers on the back. This is the other bulkhead and I've glued the doublers onto the back on that side. and. Today we're just going to, I'll show you how I put the doublers on this side. Not too complicated, but uh, there are a couple of little tricks I'll show you. Here we've got the uh, line that goes down and shows where these are going to go. What we'll do is we'll just trim up the doublers on the other side first uh, before I stick the ones on this side. And uh, I've already cut my pieces to go on here. And when I put them on, we'll end up with this 90mm flat here, which is supports the carlin that uh, goes down the side of the cockpit to create the uh, inside of the um, cockpit and the and the side deck. Yeah, we just cut out that uh, bit of wood and uh, Another bit over here, you can see the clean up. It's a lot easier to do that when we've just got the doubler on one side and uh, once we bring the doubler up here we can uh, clean up that end. I just want to show you, it's on here we've got some squeeze out of the glue. And I'll show you what I use. Here's the file I use to clean up the epoxy. Um, sort of got a double cut on that side and a single cut on this side. Um, I find these sorts of files very good at cleaning up the epoxy. They uh, take it off really quick and they don't tend to gouge too much into the wood. Um, when If you try to sand epoxy off, because it's quite hard, you end up sanding a lot of the wood around the epoxy. And uh, dig into the wood and leave yourself an uneven spot. I'll attempt to do this one handed so I can show you this file in action. <laughs> cleans it up quite nicely. Here are the doublers for the cockpit sides and uh, side decks now sitting on this um, bulkhead. Um, so we'll just uh, put some glue on and we'll clamp them on. 
before we do that, um, when we put the glue on, the pressure, um, well now they sit quite solid on here, once we've got glue in the middle it will be like they're on a piece of um, ice and they'll move around all over the place which will make it quite difficult to line them all up. So I'll show you a little trick that um, I use, everybody's got different ways of doing, trying to achieve the same thing, but what I do is I take a, just a very small braid and I'll drive them in here and cut off the heads and that'll just give me a little bit of sideways grip uh, on the piece of ply underneath. The braids that I'm putting in, you can see they're, they're not more than 12mm, um, uh, I think that's what they are. And uh, so here they are sitting in the wood at the moment and all I do is once I've uh, got them in is we'll just come in and snip off their head like that. Just that little bit protruding out and that's enough to um, hold us against the ply so we'll just position it where we want, tap it down from the other side we'll make some holes in the ply and we'll apply the glue and we should be able to line it back up with those and it should hold it while it's clamping. Here's my epoxy mixed up in my uh, epoxy mixing cup otherwise known as a yogurt container in its previous life. Um, this is the thickness I've got my epoxy to. You can sort of see it sitting there. It, uh, it won't sag, won't run out of the joint and um, it's probably a bit thicker than I would really like got a little bit too much glue powder in there but it's it's certainly going to be okay so all I'm doing with this is taking on our pieces we've got here and I'll just butter them on um, there's no need to get um, it too thick on here make sure you've got good coverage though you certainly don't want it uh, too thick and what you're going to do is produce a squeeze out more excess squeeze out. You do actually want to be able to see some of it actually squeeze out the side of the joint when you press it down because it lets you know that you've uh, actually have got it all full. So so this piece goes uh, down on here. There's a couple little marks you probably won't be able to see but uh, where the heads of my nails are. I can just feel that sort of locked into place now. And actually squeeze that down. And you can see the squeeze out coming out um, around my piece there. I'll just clean up some of that squeeze out. Now it's important with epoxy that you don't put too much pressure and squeeze all the glue out. It is Epoxy is a joint filling glue and so you do actually need some in the joint between you know, your pieces. Other glues you need high clamping pressure. Epoxy you can actually weaken the joint by squeezing it too hard and actually squeezing all of your epoxy out of the joint in between. They're all on now with our clamps. You can see I've just cleaned up the squeeze out down here. It's a lot easier to do it uh, while it's wet and waiting for it to dry. And I've got my clamps on. Now this is not an ad for the Irwin clamps, but I use these Irwin quick release clamps. Um, I think they're quite handy sort of uh, clamp. You will see some other ones around different hardware stores, wherever you go around the world I believe, that um, look very similar, about half the price, and will last about a month if you're lucky. These ones are coming into their fifth year of use so don't go cheap on those clamps if one thing you need when you're boat building is clamps and also use these little uh, hand clamps as well which have a reasonable uh, capacity and apply a, a decent pressure for um, you know epoxy where we just don't need that much clamping pressure.